Hi everyone. Um, so I have a few patterns that do, <clears throat> that have circular cast-ons. So I'm creating this quick mini tutorial um, to show you how to do what I consider to be the easiest circular cast-on. There's a lot of ways to do it, um, but honestly the quickest and easiest way and the one that I think provides the best um, center result is uh, one that I'm going to show you, which I originally learned from Laura Nelkin. You can also um, check her YouTube videos for um, another version of, of her circular cast on if you'd rather. But I will say that uh, the one that she uses is the one that I'm going to teach you to use and that I really like and think is incredibly easy with a good result. So essentially all you need is the yarn you're going to cast on and you need a single DPN to do this this cast on. Um, of course you can cast this on to a circular needle and, and do magic loop. Um, but you don't have to do, you know, a circular needle. You can do this with DPNs, um, and it's super easy. You're basically going to take your yarn, um, and you're going to, um, wrap it around your fingers like so, um, and slip your yarn through to make a, a knot. So what you want is essentially your tail hanging down to the right, a knot that looks like this, like a, like a twist and then your, your working yarn going up to the top. And so that is gonna be the base for your circular cast on. And from there, I'm gonna cast on eight stitches because a lot of my patterns call for eight stitches. Um, and to do that, you'll pardon me because I'm left-handed, but I'm gonna be doing this with my right hand because it is essentially how, how you everyone learns to do it. So it might be a little awkward for me, um, but this is how it works. So. With each motion of the needle, you're going to cast on two stitches. So the first thing you're going to do is basically do a yarn over under your needle. So pull your working yarn over your needle. And I like to hold it with my finger just to make sure that it stays. And then I'm going to take my needle, put it through my big loop and grab the yarn again. And now I have two stitches on the needle. So I have my first stitch, which was a yarn over, and I have my second stitch, which went under the needle. So I'm to get my third stitch, I'm going to yarn over again. And I'm going to repeat the process by going through the middle of the loop, grabbing that yarn and pulling it back out. And so now I have four stitches and I'm going to repeat this process again. I'm going to do a yarn over with my yarn and then I'm going to take my needle through the center of the, lo the loop and I'm going to pull it out. And now I have six stitches on. And for the last two, I'm going to do exactly the same thing. I'm going to do a yarn over. I'm going to pull, push my um, needle through the, through the center of my loop and pull the yarn through. And now I have eight stitches. Um, and if you take a look at this, you see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, and then here you have this extra kind of twist here, which is what you get from doing the slip knot. And this is one way I think in which Laura's video differs some, from some of the others, but I think you get a much neater edge on this side if you have a twist here, an extra loop through. And you will notice that with this, uh, your first stitch on the needle is twisted. So when I go to knit this first stitch, I always knit it through the back loops to untwist it. So that way I end up with a really um, nice uh, join at the, at the end. But you'll end up with all your stitches on one DPN. And then from there, it's just a matter of knitting them onto, separating them out and knitting them onto other DPNs. Or if you're doing magic loop, just to going ahead and, and, and working that now to work um, the stitches you've cast on in this direction, but you're going to slide all your stitches to the beginning and you're going to use your working yarn and knit from this side onto your other DPNs. That way you're, you're by doing that, you're going to be joining it in the round. So you're going to be having your, your string of stitches here that will be joined in the round by continuing to knit basically in rounds. And, and you could see here that if you pull your tail, it will squinch up and give you your nice little, your light, nice little tight hold. But of course you can just leave this loose until you're ready to do that, until you're ready to, to squinch it up, etc. So you'll end up with a, you know, an, a stitch that, you know, is loose uh, for as long as you want it and then squinches up as soon as you need it and it'll, it'll create a nice little um, kind of star shape in the center of your work um, that you can then, um, you know, use. And I think I have one that I've done previously that I can 
show you. So this is another, this is a piece that I, that I did originally. Um, it's called the Shipwreck Shawl. It's not one of my designs. Um, and it's knit on the Blue Brick uh, Stratford Silk and Eventide if you're, you see this and are dying. But you can see here at the center, um, this is the result of doing a circular cast on. Um, you have this nice little um, kind of star shape in the middle of your work and then you're going to work in the round on the way out. So the benefit of that circular cast on is that you get all of your stitches um, on to an, a needle that you can easily tighten and then, you know, secure by weaving it in on the back side. So if I flip this over to the back, you can see that it's got a little tail here, but that's because I've woven it around and around and around on the back and then and knotted it a bunch to secure it so that it doesn't come apart. And then this becomes the center of the work and it's, you know, seamless and it looks like you can't really tell how it started, just peered out of nowhere. So um, again, that is the circular cast on. It's very easy to do. Just make a loop, um, make yourself a little extra knot here just to secure this first stitch. Uh, you know, make you do a yarn over and then go through the loop to add each stitch for however many you need. And then at the end, you can pull this little loop to tighten it. Um, and my only other, uh, only other advice is if your first stitch is twisted like this one is, just be sure to knit it through the back loop when you're get on your first stitch. But other than that, that's how you do a circular cast on, um, a la Lauren Nelkin of Nelkin, uh, Lauren Nelkin Designs. And I, so I want to give her credit for uh, doing this method, which is what I'm showing you now. Um, so hopefully uh, this has been helpful. And if you have any questions, you can email hello at CryptoNits or check out our Discord server. Everything is uh, linked uh, below this video. Um, and so if this was helpful, definitely give it a like and subscribe. And thank you so much.